Okay, we're continuing to work through some example problems with the quotient rule. And here's our next one. f of x is 1 over sine squared x. Well, this is a quotient. The numerator happens to be very simple, just a 1. And the denominator is sine squared of x. So we can find the derivative. I'm going to say the derivative of x, or the derivative of f with respect to x, is low, that's sine squared x, times d high, the derivative of the top. And the derivative of a constant is just 0. So this is sine squared x times 0. So that term is going to be 0. Minus high, which is 1, times d low. And the derivative of sine squared x is a, a problem that involves the chain rule. So we need to first apply the power rule. And we get 2 times sine x to the first and then times the derivative of the sine function, which is cosine x. Remember, sine squared x is sine x squared. So our outer function is the squared. So we apply the power rule, and we get 2 times the inner, inner function to the first. And then the derivative of the inner function is the cosine of x. And then all of this over the denominator squared. So sine squared x squared is sine to the fourth x or sine x to the fourth. And we can simplify this a little bit. Now if you have an AP exam question, for example, that's a multiple choice question, the answer that you get might look very different. It might be correct, but, but it could still look very different from some of the given answers. So I'll show you um, some ways that we can convert this into different forms. First, let's simplify this. This term goes to zero, and we're left with uh, negative two sine x cosine x over sine to the fourth x then obviously a sine x will cancel and so this will give us negative 2 cosine x over sine cubed x so that would be an answer but note that this is also equivalent to this this could also be written as negative 2 over sine squared x times tangent of x because this cosine over one of these signs would be a cotangent and the cotangent is equivalent to a tangent in the denominator so it could be written like that or it could be written like this negative 2 cosecant squared x over tangent x and you see we could just take this tangent x it remains down here but a sine squared x in the denominator is equivalent to a cosecant squared x in the numerator. Uh, another, another thing that might happen is uh, a little trig identity could get applied here. 2 sine x cosine x. You might remember that 2 sine x cosine x is the same as cosine 2x. The handy little trig identity. So, so this part could, have, could be replaced by that. But my point here is that there are multiple possible answers all of which are mathematically equivalent. And if you have a multiple choice question, if you get your answer and it looks like this, and one of the answers in the list of possible multiple choices is this, you need to be able to recognize that those two are equivalent. Now that said, let me show you another way to solve this problem that's actually easier. Instead of solving this as a quotient rule problem, let me erase all of this. and I'm going to solve this a different way. I'm just going to think of this, I'm going to think of my original function f of x as being sine of x to the power of negative 2. And then we can simply solve it as a power rule problem and the chain rule. So f prime of x is going to be negative 2 times the sine of x to the negative 3 times the derivative of my inner function, which would be cosine x. And there you're done, and that's really fast. And you could see, if you wanted to rewrite it, you could see that that's negative 2 cosine x over sine cubed x. 
which is one of the answers we had earlier. And recognizing that this problem can be done as a power rule and chain rule problem instead of a quotient rule problem will save you time. And if you're doing something like this on the AP exam, time counts because it's a timed test and you're usually pressed for time. So seeing that it can be done in, by a simpler method is, uh, is important and helpful. All right, here's our next example y is equal to sine cubed x over x to the fourth and let's find y primed. So the derivative is going to be low times d high and we use the chain rule. This will be 3 sine squared x times the derivative of the sine function which is cosine x. So that's low d high then we do minus high which is sine cubed x times d low, which will be 4x cubed. And all of that is over the denominator squared. So all of that is over x to the power of 8. And let's simplify this a little bit. This will this is worth simplifying because we've got an x to the fourth here and an x cubed there and an x to the eighth there. So we can factor out an x cubed and cancel it out. And when we do that, we'll be left with a single x here and we can also factor out uh, a sine squared x. So let's do this. I'll, I'll write this and, and show the, the factoring step. So let's just factor out the x cubed sine squared x. And that leaves us with a 3x cosine x minus 4. And the x cubed is gone and two of the sines are gone. So we're just left with 4 sine x and all of this is over x to the eighth and then we can cancel out the x cubed cancels and the x to the eighth becomes the x to the fifth and so our answer is sine squared x minus our times 3x cosine x minus 4 sine x all over x to the fifth